Okay, friends, let's start off with this little tag sign from Dollar Tree. And originally I was gonna cut the little hanger, but I realized that I could use it once we were done. So I just gently took it off and set it aside. And then I gave this a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle Sage I think it's sage green. Don't quote me. I know it's sage something, but you guys, this paint is buttery smooth. If you cannot get Waverly chalk paint, this is amazing chalk paint, and I know you guys will love it as much as I do. I don't get anything, so I will leave the link in the description box for you guys. That way, if you guys can't get Waverly, you can get this. But anyway, so I wanted this to look like faux shiplap, so I went every inch and a half I marked it and then I drew a line with my pencil and then the easiest part of this is just to take a paper towel and to kind of smudge these lines and make them look not perfect if that makes sense don't be alarmed your paper towel will like kind of shred to pieces if you will don't worry just get another one if you need to it's no big deal once I was satisfied with the way that it looked, then I went in with my pencil once again and just drew little screws where I thought that they would be. And then I also smudged those with a paper towel as well. For the next part, there are so many different ways you could do this. Dollar Tree sells jar little signs that you could glue down to your sign. But for me, I wanted to use my Bloom and Grow Transfer. There are two different jar designs that come in this exact transfer. So it comes one and then you cut it apart. Obviously for this project, the bloom and grow was perfect so i start by transferring on the outer part with my black chalk paste and then i go in with my white chalk paste and i transfer on the little flower as well as the bloom and grow next i just grab some random greenery and some flowers that i had in my stash if you guys have not seen my um, walmart diy video i will leave that linked in the cards in the right hand corner but i just recently showed you guys some diys and some diy items that are affordable from walmart and i also took you through the floral section walmart's floral section is my absolute favorite they look so high end and they're such a great price that that's where i normally get most of my my florals so um, I just took some lamb's ear and then this pink bunch with the peonies they are from a different bunch so I just kind of pull some random pieces and then arrange them the way that I like once I have them arranged and figure out like the way that I want them this is what I like to do that way I'm not gluing it down and then I have to rip stuff off because I don't like it I would just much rather lay it down see how I like it and then pull everything off and glue it down with some Gorilla hot glue so if you guys are enjoying this type of content please give this video a big thumbs up and if you are not a part of my crafty family I would love if you would subscribe and then ring the bell and all that way you're notified every single time I upload so for this next part, I left this in. Generally, I cut things like that out because I feel like you guys don't want to see me like arranging it, pulling it off, etc. But if you guys enjoy like watching my process, seeing how I, you know, put my floral arrangements together, whatever the case may be, let me know down in the comments because like I said, I always think like you guys don't want to see that. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this sign. I love it so much, but again, I can never pick a favorite because I'm so indecisive, but you guys, this is definitely up there in one of my top favorites that I have ever made. Oh, I forgot to mention, and my camera does very weird things, so some of the clips are not there, but you can see that I just put a tiny little bow right underneath on the side of this little floral arrangement. I thought that it just tied it all together and tied it to all of the other pieces that I made, so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think think of DIY number one.
Moving on, I take one of these wheel wreath forms from Dollar Tree. I wasn't sure what to call it at first, but I think it's a wheel wreath form. And I start by just, again, taking that random greenery that I had and laying it out so that I could see what I had. So I take two bunches of lamb's ear. They're $2 a piece and they come with two, I guess, stalks, stems, picks <laughs> in each bunch. So I took two of each, so four all together, and I put two on one side and two on the other. And then to attach them, I take some jute and just wrap it around and then secure it with some hot glue. Now, to glue this down, I glued it down with some hot glue, making sure to glue it on top of one of those cutting mats because I knew that the hot glue would go right through this metal piece. And when I went to pull it up, of course the hot glue stretched. So all I did was just go in and just wrap the greenery to the wheel, if that makes sense. Now I already knew that I would have to do this, but the reason that I wrapped the greenery first, instead of just wrapping it directly to the wheel, um, my thinking was that if I wrapped the greenery first, then I would have something to like adhere it to. If you go and just try to wrap it, I mean, you can do that, but then they try to flop around. And I always find that it doesn't always look the way that I want it. So if I wrap it first and then wrap it again to the wheel, then I know that it's going to look exactly the way that I like it. Now when I ended this jute, of course I attached it with some hot glue, but I kind of put it in a design on an X just in case I decided that I didn't want to add flowers. But of course I wanted everything to go together and I really loved the way that these flowers looked right in the middle of that greenery. So of course I did go ahead and I glued down the greenery and, or I should say, I kept saying greenery, the flowers, <laughs> glued down the flowers that I liked. Now one of my panties ended up being all wonky. They have like these plastic pieces at the bottom that hold them to their shape. And this bottom piece kind of came unglued, which made the rest of it come apart. So all I did was just run some hot glue across those plastic pieces and then kind of pushed it together in the middle and voila, it looks brand new. Next, I pulled some greenery from a different pick. It's a different color as well as, or I should say two different picks. Um, they're kind of different color greens and I just wanted to add a pop of color here and there. So I just kind of arranged that the way that I liked it. Now, this is personal preference. This is the way that my eyes are happy. So you have to arrange the way that your eyes make you happy. Okay guys, if you're wondering why it's so close, again, my camera is doing funny things. I didn't have this clip, um, but I did have it on my phone for my TikTok and Instagram, so I guess I'll do a shameless plug. <laughs> if you guys are not following me on Instagram and TikTok, you can find me at All Things Crafty too. all one word. I post um, you know, daily content over there. It's really fun. I have stories. I do a lot of personal things. I chat. It's a lot. It's a lot fun. It's a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys will come over and check me out. So anyway, I needed to make a sign for this, or I guess I didn't need to, but I wanted to. <laughs> and I didn't have anything quite big enough in the house, but I did have these signs and you guys know I love these signs. So all I did was take my welcome transfer, I marked it, measured it out, and then cut with my utility knife. I just score it a few times from the front and then kind of push from the back and then I cut it down that like bend if you will. So again, I lost the clip on both. You guys, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm doing my best to survive and keep it all together and whew, it's a lot. So anyway, I'm doing my best. I hope you guys understand. But anyway, I painted it and then I just once again drew those lines with my pencil every inch and a half and then I um, smudged it again with my paper towel after I 
marked, or I should say put down the little screws at the top and bottom. And I'm sure you guys have guessed it. I went in with my welcome transfer. Look how gorgeous this font is, you guys. I could never do this by hand if I wanted to. And to use my Cricut would take me probably an hour just to cut this one word because you have to design it. You have to hook up your machine. It's a lot. So I literally just cut my transfer, pull it from the backing sheet, lay it on my surface, and then use my black chalk paste to transfer on that gorgeous word. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, you guys know my OCD gets the best of me. I'm also super indecisive, so it takes me forever to kind of figure out where I like this, but I kind of just slide it down behind that greenery, and then once I'm satisfied with the placement, then I hold it with one of my hands, um, from the bot or from the front and then with my other hand I use my hot glue to glue kind of on top of the wheel gluing the sign to the wheel from the back and if I didn't mention add lots and lots and lots and lots of hot glue i do not want this sign to go anywhere once i hang it up i'm so excited to put it up at my door at my new on my door at my new house clearly melissa cannot talk today it's been a long day already but anyway i just let that dry before i go and move it around i also make sure it's not going to go anywhere once it's dry and then i once again secure it with some more hot glue just to reinforce it i'm using my smaller hot glue gun and for some reason when the temperature isn't as high it doesn't glue as well so i just wanted to be sure that this was not going anywhere moving on i didn't have this in frame very well and my table is driving me nuts because <laughs> the lines are not straight in the video and I know you guys don't care about that but it's driving me nuts so I apologize if that bothers you but I did just want to bring in some kind of like soft girly elements to this so I thought that that ribbon that I used in the previous DIY would be perfect to kind of just make small little petals if you will so I just cut a small piece I fold it and glue it in half and then I pinch it and glue it together then once that dries then I just kind of glue it into my arrangement um, and look how cute this is and then for the hanger I use that exact same ribbon I got this at Walmart around Christmas time and I just fallen in love with it ever since unfortunately this is my last one so I'm gonna try to have to hunt some down but anyway I just kind of wrap it from the front to the back on both sides securing it down with some hot glue and then once it was secured together then I kind of put some hot glue on the bar right where the ribbon meets the um, the wheel and then I just kind of pinched that together so that it looked a little bit more uniform With that same ribbon I did make a bow however I didn't like the way that it looked you guys can let me know in the comments do you like this bow or do you like the bow that I initially went with so this one all I did was cut three strips of each ribbon or no I lied three strips of the lacy one and and I do have a full tutorial on this exact bow so if you guys would like to see that video it's actually 11 super easy bows so I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner as well for you guys but I just make this very simple bow and I just kind of fold them not in half um, almost in half but leaving some tail out and then you just kind of pinch it together all of the pieces and then at the bottom you either wrap a 
uh, zip strap or I didn't have any right here. So I just used some jute, wrapped it around, and then to secure this to my wheel, I fluffed up all the little ribbon pieces and then I tied it to the top of the wheel in between our hanger. I then just kind of played around with the tails, cutting some of them in dovetails and just kind of pushing the pieces around again till my eyes were happy. I also forgot to mention that if you guys want to find any of the chalk supplies that I used in today's video, you can find it in my link tree in the description box below where you'll see all of my links are in one spot. Click here. Again, all of the items that I use are personal preference, so if you guys don't like any of the items that I used, always remember that you can use the items that you like and make it your own. But look how gorgeous this turned out, you guys. This is why I say I cannot figure out which project is my favorite because now I'm leaning towards this one, but I absolutely love the last one and this one as well, so of course I can't make a decision. But I know you guys will let me know in the comments and would you guys have used different flowers or different greenery or would you have made it exactly like I did? Last but not least, DIY number three is so super easy. I'm sorry I didn't show you which sign this is. You'll see it here in a minute, but these are the signs that I built my mini fireplace with. If you're new and you haven't seen that video, I'll also link that in the cards in the right-hand corner for you as well. But all I did was start by taking this sticker off. Of course, it gave me trouble, so I had to use my heat tool to heat up that sticker and then use my straight edge to push it off. And then, of course, I didn't have my staple pull inside. <laughs> so I used any and everything to get those staples out. And then I finally found that little mini screwdriver, or I should say flathead. And that's what I ultimately used. But if you have a staple pull, please, please use that and spare yourself some trouble. Next, I go in with my Dixie Bell cotton chalk paint and I give this a distress coat. As many of you know, your girl is super impatient, so I did use that same heat tool to dry this paint. Now, I have found with Waverly, if you try to dry it, it cracks, it, it's not a good situation. But with this Dixie Belle paint, I can get super close with a heat gun. They use Dixie Belle on like high-end furniture and stuff, so... Um, I think that it's just a better quality, actually I know for a fact it's just a better quality paint. So don't be alarmed if you use Dixie Belle, you can use heat to dry it. Next I go in with my house patterns transfer. Look how cute this is you guys, the possibilities are endless with all that comes in this transfer. You can reuse it so you can make gifts, you can make different signs for different parts of your house if you have different decor like i said there's so many different ideas and i can't wait to do a few things for my home um after this one so anyway i just take the greenery house cutout one there's two different parts so if you see on the right hand side you can use kind of like that distressed square or you can use the greenery one. So I use that and use my eucalyptus paste to transfer on that greenery. That way it would match the rest of my DIYs. I did also tape off the roof part. That way I didn't accidentally, accidentally transfer any of that on. Then once I pull back that transfer, look how gorgeous that image is it never gets old and then I make sure to dry it really good before moving to the next step. Next I just line up the bottom as best as possible. Now if you want to wash this you can. I knew that it would pull up kind of distressed and I like that so I didn't worry about washing it but if you want it to be solid like the first um, 
transfer that you, or you know the first time you did it then definitely take it to your sink wash it really good with a board eraser flip it sticky side up and dry it with a paper towel really good and then you can go on and do your second one Next, I go in with my roof piece and I transfer that on with my black chalk paste and then I transfer on the chimney with my storm. Once again, drying in between coats because if you try to lay down a transfer while it's wet, obviously it's going to pull up that wet paste and then it's going to leave your image not looking so great. So um, just take the extra step to dry it. Trust me, I know it's a little bit annoying, but it is a small inconvenience um, to, you know, prevent you from having a huge inconvenience. So for the wording, originally I was going to do it all gray, but you guys know I like my little ombre effect. So I transfer on the colors that I like and then I join them together. I use my squeegee to kind of join them together at first, and then I take my finger with some water and then kind of do a swirl motion all the way down that line where the colors join. I then just pull up my transfer, look how gorgeous. And then for the flowers at the bottom, I used my pesto for the leaves. I used my peachy keen for these flowers. And then for the next flowers, I did have a color similar out in my shed, but we just got like 10 inches of snow and I didn't want to run out there. So I did just mix up my own with a little bit of peachy keen, a dot of red and a little bit of orange. And look how gorgeous that is. It matches my other flowers on the first two DIYs and I love the way that this looks. Next, I don't even know what these little brick pieces are for. <laughs> I don't know what they're for you guys, but I used them to kind of separate the flowers from the door. My thinking was this is kind of like the flower bed at the bottom and then the door, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you would have placed the flowers elsewhere, if you would have just left the bricks out, I don't know, but <laughs> I love the way that it turned out. So I guess that's all that matters because I am the one who has to look at it every day. That's my motto at least. <laughs> but anyway, I start with the left side of the bricks, then I go to the right side and then I join them together in the middle. Next, I go in with my door. Again, I transfer it on I transfer that on with my black chalk paste. I meant to mention, if you guys don't have paste, you can always use chalk paint. Just be aware that your transfers will not last as long as if you were to use the paste. However, you know, it kind of evens out, if that makes sense. But anyway, last but not least, I transfer on my windows. And I don't know you guys, just something about doing the chalk couture, figuring out what you're gonna use, how is it gonna look together, which colors, squeegeeing it on and then pulling the transfer back even washing it just the whole process for me is so therapeutic and whenever i'm talking i literally am just not thinking about anything else i'm just enjoying crafting and that's something that i really look forward to so anyway you guys all of the chalk supplies again will be linked in my link tree in the description box below as well as all of a lot of the products that I used are linked in my Amazon store in the same link tree. You'll see all of my links are here. If you click the title of this video, a box will appear and that is where the description box is. Also, don't forget to subscribe on your way out if you haven't already. I see a lot of you guys watch but you're not subscribed and I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss a crafty moment. Also, if you think that somebody would enjoy this video, sharing out those videos as well as thumbs up really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Last but not least, I know that was long-winded. If you guys love my work and want to support my channel, I do have a buy me a coffee link in the description box below. Click the title of the video and then a box will appear. That is where the description box is. But as I always say, you do not have to support me monetarily. Whichever way you support me, 
rather you like my videos, share them, subscribe, watch the ads, click the ads. There's so many different ways you can support your favorite creators and whichever way you support me, I appreciate you so, so much. And as always, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. I'm so grateful for you and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up to your left while you're waiting on more content or you can join my DIY family to your right.